obviously, as a huge fan of Korean StarCraft yourself, uh, I'm assuming it meant a lot to you to be able to commentate GSL. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you explain what that felt like? I, that was like a next level thing. Like, I can't even really put to words what that meant. Like, I mean, everyone knows growing up, it was taste doses. It was, you know, you look up to them and it's just like, oh my God, like they're insane. Like, hey. SC Historian here, and today I have a piece for you I shot late last year while I was in Korea with none other than Gemini. For those of you who may not be familiar with him, Dylan is a hardcore StarCraft guy whose participation in the scene runs the gamut from putting together build guides on the All Things Protoss subreddit to fanboying over Trap and Liquid Hero in the past to casting the illustrious GSL. Gemini and I had a wonderful chat that showcases not only his love for the game, but his wonderful personality, and I think you're all going to enjoy it. If you're excited about this one, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss out on future releases with other awesome guests. If you really enjoy what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support really helps. And now, without further ado, here's my word with Gemini. Okay, so uh, Gemini, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time today, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It's awesome to have you uh, do an interview here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, uh, I I really like broadening the overall variety of people. You know, I feel like there's so many different, like, like you don't have to be some long-term career caster or like a high-level pro to like be a significant member of the scene, you know? Um, so how'd you first get involved with StarCraft? Uh, yeah, I mean, this goes back quite a while honestly i mean i i played starcraft as a little you know eight-year-old basically like you know my brother got a uh, brood war on the computer so it was me kind of just like toying around with you know the, the 1v1 or not even 1v1 or i couldn't actually even play online is the thing i couldn't do battle and my parents like wouldn't let me <laughs> so uh the extent of my brood war knowledge was uh getting a custom map that i made which had like a crazy amount of resources and these ridiculously broken high ground positions and I would spam cannons and reavers and watch the the enemy just suicide into the into the setup. <laughs> that was my brood war experience and I did that for quite a bit and then it was very fun and uh, I could never beat even a single mission of the campaign. I was that garbage but yeah that's how I learned about StarCraft but then I uh, you know like StarCraft 2 is coming out I remember my brother showed me like uh, like a video or um, like a website or whatever of um, the like the the preview of like the units that were coming out or whatever, and I was like, oh, that looks so cool! Like StarCraft Two is going to come out. That's pretty interesting. And then I just like happened to randomly remember that at some point on uh, New Year's New Year's Eve of two thousand and nine. And then I Googled it because I was sitting in my room doing nothing because who goes out on New Year's Eve? Like, yeah, what? Who does that? And uh, yeah, I looked it up and I saw that the beta was going to get announced soon. And I was like, oh my God, that's sick. And then I it was literally from there on didn't leave StarCraft 2 ever. So I also have a memory of during the Wings of Liberty days, like, like my whole family was in my basement for New Year's, like my extended relatives. I just went upstairs and played StarCraft. <laughs> so that's really funny. I just unlocked a memory for me. Um, that's what real people do. Like. Yeah. <laughs> real people. Yeah. None of those fake people do that. Like, we don't need to associate with them. Noted. <laughs> so, have you ever been, like, really deeply involved in any other, like, gaming communities? Uh, I Not necessarily the community, but the games. Mm -hmm. I have tried playing some other games pretty uh, heavily. There was a stint where I was doing a lot of Rocket League, um, which was after, like I had like a little period where I tried going full-time in StarCraft in like 2014, 2015. Obviously that didn't work, but you know, after that finished up, then I was, I was actually huge into Rocket League. I did a lot of Rocket League for a while. I got like basically up to what you would consider to be like GM, like low GM of Rocket League basically. I tried playing like some tournaments. My team got like kind of deep-ish in like one of the qualifiers for like the main uh, like Rocket League like tournament or whatever. So that was pretty cool. But like I never was really part of the community really. I just kind of was just like doing it myself essentially with you know me and my couple friends that we were playing. Um, but yeah, Rocket League was the big one, and and then Valorant as well. I do a lot of Valorant now. But again, I'm not like. I don't, I don't do like Valor and Twitter or like whatever, like, like I just like, you know, see some stuff pop up and that's kind of it. But 
you know, I, I still play it. I mean, I, there's people that I know that like do some of the, the stuff behind the scenes and stuff like that, of course. So it's like I kind of, you know, a little bit there, but mostly StarCraft is like, you know, comparatively, it's nothing like that. So yeah, StarCraft has always just been the, the number one go-to. Totally makes sense. That's really cool. I didn't know um, you'd delve that deep into some of those other scenes, but mm. it's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, I remember my earliest exposure to you was seeing a lot of the work you did and, like, participation on, like, all things Protoss, stuff like that. What what motivated you to get involved there? Yeah, that, uh, I mean, that is the stuff that I definitely worked the most on, for sure. I just, you know, all things Protoss is a, I still do, like, the Discord community stuff. But we just did, we just finished up the season two of our uh, team league as well for the Discord. So it's, like, super cool that we can do all that stuff. But... Yeah, like doing my build of the week series on there has been you know something I love doing. That originally came from just the innate like desire to like teach people about StarCraft. Essentially, like I just like to say things that I think I know a decent a bit about. Like it's just kind of fun to just you know give out any info that I can, help help players here and there. Um, that also originated the the thing I was talking about when I first went into StarCraft, the uh, when I searched up that thing on New Year's and it was like the beta or whatever, that website that I found it on, the SC2 Armory, is like a super old school website. If there's anyone that even knows what that is, those people are super based. But uh, that was the first place that I did like a like a big guide of like just like teaching people. Like I was like, oh, let me just do it. Like it's if it helps people, then that's cool. If not, then, you know, whatever. Um, but I kind of just wanted to keep doing stuff like that. And then when I found all things Protoss, I just was like, oh, this is another great spot to just kind of talk about Protoss and help people if I can. Um, and that became the, the Build of the Week archives, which was, you know, the, as of this now, not to brag, it is the largest condensed amount of build orders of Protoss ever. So <laughs> I know I'm, I, I find some pride in that a little bit, but no, obviously I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do it anymore, obviously just because of time, but uh, no, I, it was uh, something that I put a lot of work in. It was, it was a, it's a fun thing that I, from the, from the past for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any reason not to be proud, right? Like that's, <laughs> that's something you put a lot of effort into. So like makes sense. And obviously something also that like a lot of people enjoyed and benefited from and also theoretically like kind of helped onboard people from being a bit more casual to actually like participating a little bit more actively. This yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool as well, just because like you all have someone come up to me like, I mean, people like will write comments or whatever all the time, like saying like, oh, thank you for this. Like this helped me a lot. And it's like, that's, that's, that's like so cool. It's like yeah. to just know that they appreciate it. But then like someone will come up to you at like a tournament or whatever and be like, hey, like I, your, your guides helped me all the way up to diamond, like wherever a year ago. And like, it was so cool. Was, and that's just like, getting that is actually crazy. Like I would never even thought that that was a thing that could happen to me like years back or whatever. Like when I first started, like people just know who I am and like, just you know something i just typed up because i wanted to and thought it was cool like actually impacted someone so heavily it was like whenever that happens it's actually the coolest thing i get like the biggest smile it's, it's so fun it's it's really cool uh so yeah it, it's it's all it's awesome honestly that guy was standing there and he saw you and he was like is that gg mini <laughs> <laughs> is that the guy who artosis said his name wrong <laughs> oh my god i love you like yeah um so uh <clears throat> like you know, then pivoting from like the build order guides and, and, and stuff like that, and archiving, you, you move into like StarCraft content production for, for some time. What what inspired you to make that pivot? Um, I think it was just like, there was no real like, oh, I'm gonna just do this now, or I just wanna do that. Like, it's mostly just like whatever I felt like I had the time to do and felt like I wanted to do it was just like whatever I was motivated to make at a certain time. It's like if I wasn't, if I didn't want to actually write any guides or do any build order write ups or anything, I wasn't going to do it because I needed to be motivated to do it. And that's kind of my thing in general where it's like, oh, if I want to make some funny videos on YouTube, then I'm going to do that. If I feel like I want to just grind ladder for a month, I want to do that. So yeah, it's basically, I, I'm a very motivational, like just, sudden inspiration guy where it's like, if I just don't, if I'm not feeling it for something, I'm not gonna do it. So basically if I've done anything, it's probably because I've just been like, I really think this is so cool right now and I just wanna try to do do this thing. And then uh, yeah, whether that's videos, different content, the build order guides, um, anything streaming. So uh, yeah, pretty much. That's awesome, yeah, it's uh, like, 
it's one of those things where like, yeah, sometimes you look at something uh, from the outside looking in, you're like, mm, that's kind of a lot of work. And but then when you're the person doing it, sometimes if you're if you're really motivated or like passionate, it doesn't really feel like work. I find the same thing sometimes when I'm producing this content where I'll like sit down to edit something and you know, in the blink of an eye, like three hours go by and I'm like, oh, holy crap. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't realize time was elapsing like this. Um, so you've been out here in Korea for, for some time now. Um, explain to folks what you're doing out here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I moved out here to, uh, I mean, it, essentially because of StarCraft, like it was the, the, the history of playing this game and knowing everything about the, the culture. I mean, I've, anyone who knows me knows that I've been, you know, I am a Korean focused <laughs> guy. I like watching Korean players. I like copying their builds. I like rooting for them. Trap. Uh, so like, yeah, I, there's, you know, I, that's just been a thing of me. So I like, uh, I've always liked Korea. I wanted to come here whenever I could have the chance to do so. I did it with a little, like, uh, I did a, um, like a, uh, what is the word? A co study exchange. Abroad. Yeah. Study oh, abroad. Thank you. I did a study abroad. Um, and it was like, yep, this is great. I love this country. It's so sick. I want to come back. So I was going to be a teacher in the States anyways, uh, with my teaching degree. So I was just like, let me just apply that in Korea. Let me see what I can do with it. See what it takes me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just haven't wanted to leave. <laughs> There's no reason for me to leave. I just, I just love this country so much. It's just fun being in here. There's so much to do. The culture is very interesting. I'm just, I just love the, uh, everything, the food, everything, honestly. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I just like it here. Yeah. No, it's awesome that your experience has been so positive. Um, how did your family feel about your decision to move out here? Yeah, they were at first, I remember bringing it up the first time at a dinner and, uh, the response was less than ideal. It was, it was like a, I just kind of mentioned it and in a more serious way, like, yeah, I actually think I might want to do this. And then they were kind of just like, uh, wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I don't, uh, and so they, 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 I think they just assumed that I was just like, it's just a phase thing. He's just coming off of his, his study abroad. He's just feeling it or whatever. He, he's not going to really want to move. Uh, but then I like mentioned it again, another point, and, I was, and then they were kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think, I guess he does want to do that. So at first, yeah, they were a little iffy for sure. Cause you know, no one like, People in my family are all very close. Like my grandparents, all my grandparents live within like 15 minutes of my house where I grew up. Like um, a lot of our relatives are just all really close. We had like this big family reunion every year uh, in that town where all my grandparents live and like everyone's close enough to just easily come by. There's like only a couple relatives that live outside of where I'm from. So to have someone in their family, have their son move to a whole other country, I'm sure was, you know, a little uh, nerve wracking for them. But I, I mean, I, I can't be thankful enough to the fact that they let me do it. Obviously, just, you know, to they know that this is what I wanted to do, what would be fun and enjoyable for me and what I wanted to do. So, uh, yeah, I know I just I, I just appreciate them for doing that. But at first they were definitely a little uh, not quite sure about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> it definitely makes sense. Like when you're, you know, child or whatever relative in other circumstances, is like gonna move across the world. <laughs> I can yeah, see yeah. how that might be a little nerve wracking. Mm. So how proficient would you say you are in Korean at this point? Not as good as I want to be, sadly. <laughs> I mean, it's it's tough be, being able to learn uh, a whole other language while doing a full-time teaching job where I'm not supposed to speak Korean either. It's like, you're not literally, you can't, you're not supposed to. Um, and just on the fact that I'm also, I was for the longest time, for the first couple of years when I was here, I'm focusing so much on doing StarCraft stuff. Whenever I'm not doing teaching, I was doing like a bunch of coaching. I was still trying to write build order guides every now and then. I was just trying to go to GSL, like all this, you know, I was trying to do my own tournament. I was doing the, the, the Gemini Korean Invitationals for a little bit too. So it's just hard. <laughs> it's hard, man, to learn a language. And we're, I'm American, bro. We don't learn languages. Like, what? like, we don't learn languages. You can't learn a language as an American. It's impossible. So uh, it's tough. I mean, I can, I, I can get around, basically. It's like, you know, it's basic conversational. It's the restaurant Korean where it's like you can easily order any food you need to or, you know, any emergency situation. It's chill. It's fine. You can work it out. But uh, no, I, I, I want to get better. That's like one of my goals eventually once I have more free time is to I just I want to be much better <laughs> at Korean. So 
yeah, it's it's rough though. <laughs> it definitely seems difficult. So I think when I asked you why you came out here, you didn't actually like. I think we got sidetracked and you didn't talk about the teaching. I think. Mm. Um, so. Oh you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, that's that's obviously a big part of why you're here as well now. Like your your job out here is is, is teaching. What's that like? Yeah, I mean, teaching like extends back to when I was doing even like the teaching people how to play Protoss stuff from like years back, or whatever. Like, I just enjoy teaching people and and giving out whatever knowledge I have, um, and whenever I feel like it could be useful to someone. So that is kind of where I wanted to to take that. I mean, even when I was a kid, there was a points where I wanted to be a teacher in like sixth grade. I was like, I'm going to be a science teacher. Like, yada yada. It wasn't science. It, it was history, but I still like just like to share anything I have. So teaching in Korea as well, it's just cool. The, the kids are fun. They're, they're hilarious little Korean students. They just say silly things and I'm just laughing. It's like, oh, this is so silly. Why would you say that? Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a very fun uh, little, it's just a different experience. Obviously you don't get the same teaching in America. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun. Uh, I feel like I'm just like, uh, I feel like my job is not sometimes a teacher. I'm just like a stand-up comedian where I'm just, I literally just sit up front of the, at front of the room and I just say something that's not funny, but they all think it's hilarious and laugh. I'm just like, Oh, that was so funny guys. Like, dude, I'm killing it. It's like, Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, holy moly. Maybe I should do this as a job. Like this is insane. But no, I was like, I mean, the, the kids, they obviously find things hilarious that other people don't, but like, yeah, yeah it's, that's kind of what I do. It's like, I just, you know, I try to make it fun for them as much as possible. I, I, I know that like talking to my Korean friends, uh, they growing up in, in private schools or hagwons or academies or whatever, they just know that like, it's all memorization. It's all just writing garbage and like, they don't get to really experience hands-on English. And so that's what I try the most. I just want to like, let these students understand what it feels like to just talk normally to an English speaking person. So that's what I like to do the most. And I, and I honestly, I think like being able to understand humor is one of the most difficult things ever in a language. And so being able to give them that practice and, and seeing that they can reciprocate like what I think is funny or like they can like even some of the higher level students can like build off of what I say and it actually is hilarious. And so, that's another great thing to just like kind of gauge how good they are at English and that's what I like to do as well a lot so yeah that's sick man I bet they are really grateful um, hopefully <laughs> 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 who knows maybe they all like leave that place and like what the hell that guy is fucking clown what is this guy talking about like, I don't even know obviously as a huge fan of Korean Starcraft yourself uh, I'm assuming it meant a lot to you to be able to commentate GSL. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you explain what that felt like? Uh, that was like a next level thing. Like I can't even really put to words what that meant. Like, I mean, everyone knows growing up, it was taste doses. It was, you know, you look up to them and it's just like, oh my God, like they're insane. Like it's, to be, it, to, to, when I like, I mean, I, I have like talked to Dan and stuff like that, Nick and Dan a little bit, like, you know, leading up to that, I didn't, you know, I would just like met up with them after GSLs or whatever. And like we're, you know, we're, we're friends at that point. And it's like, you know, you get to know them. They're cool people. They're exactly the way they are on stream, by the way. Like you talk to Artosis off of, off of camera, off of his stream. And he's also still bitching about how <laughs> people spam arbiters and recall into his base. It's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. But, um, it's the next thing to actually work with them. And when like Artosis gave me that message or whatever, saying like, Hey, you want to cast GSL Nick's got something else planned this day. Like you want to fill in. I was just like, I felt like elated. It was like, it was like the most ridiculous feeling. It was actually crazy. And then getting into the studio, you know, going, going to the, the green room and like, you know, whatever is just like meeting the producers and everything. It's like, what a, what a whack experience. Like no shot. You would tell me when I was, you know, 15 years old in high school, getting, you know, just to understand what Starcraft was at that point to say like, Hey, you're going to cast GSL in 10 years. I'd just be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> no shot. Like you're, what are you trolling me with right now? So like, it was crazy. It was such a fun experience to do that. So yeah, that, that's like easy top three highlights of my Starcraft career. Just no shot. It's so good. Yeah. No, that's, uh, it's amazing. I, I was, I was really happy for you, dude. I, I, I was, I knew the type of person that you were and, and how you would be feeling. Yeah. It was just, uh, I mean, as a fan to do that is like, it's just an honor. It's such a privilege. It's, you can't even ask to do anything different. So it was just, it was sick. 
I can't even put to words, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> so, you know, you, you have this, uh, I almost said famously, but I think I'm just such a StarCraft nerd, it seems famous to me, but um, you have quite a relationship with, uh, with Trap. <laughs> um, yeah. So how did that come about? I, uh, I mean, yeah, I like Trap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, before that, it was Hero, it was Liquid Hero. So if any of the OGs know that, uh, yeah, it was Liquid Hero originally. So I got to, you know, shout out to my main boy, my, my OG. But uh, no, I mean, Trap is just like the, I, I, this is going to get long winded, so I'll try to keep it short. But basically, I really like how Hero played because he plays really cool and interesting. And, you know, out of the box, he was like the multi prong guy. He was like, you know, played super crazy the way that no one else did. So that's why I really liked him. And then when I first started watching Trap, he was doing kind of the same stuff, right? Like he was doing like st storm drop builds in PVT, stuff like that, that's just like no one else does. It's super interesting and cool, micro intensive, multitask intensive. Um, so yeah, I just liked watching him for a long time. Uh, I just, I don't know, <laughs> I just, you just become a fan of someone over time. And I guess I just like being fans of someone like really uh, a lot, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he, he's a, just a cool person. I just got to meet him like at one point and I just, you know, got a picture. It's like, hi, like, oh my gosh, hello. Like, can I get an autograph? Thank you. Like, bye. Like, you know, that kind of whole thing. And then I uh, just so over time, I, you know, just like say like, you know, good luck, like in your games or whatever. I'd like message him just like randomly on like Twitter or something. I don't know what it was, but like, just like, you know, good luck in your matches. Like, like, hope you do well, like that, yada, yada. And like eventually he would like, you know, respond or something. And, I would like show him builds. I would try to get him to disrupt or drop in VVT, like, you know, stuff like that. He would tell me it's trash, but you know, whatever. Um, no, I, I don't know. It just, I, I, whenever I'm like a big fan of someone, it's like the coolest thing to be able to like, you know, just share any like, you know, experience with the, with the game to them. It's like a cool thing if they can reciprocate. So I don't know, he, he's just a really cool and nice guy. So he was just, uh, I don't know. He's cool. I like I like him. He's he's a nice guy. He's he's uh, good at the game. <laughs> what can I say? Well put. Um, so you've been working with uh, Onside for for a bit now. What do you do for them, and how did that come about? Yeah, I, I'm basically just the the social media guy. I, I just uh, post stuff on Twitter, Instagram, stuff like that. Um, I actually funny story. The the owner is someone that I knew. I coached actually at one point. Uh, it was kind of interesting. And uh, then like, you know, fast forward a year and a half or something like that, he just like, he just knows who I am. And so he was like, hey, we want to, we need a social media guy. Do you, you want to do it? And I was like, sick, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually that simple to be honest. Like it, it was like, he just like, yeah, I didn't know you're like a funny guy. Like, you know, you know how Twitter works, you know, all this stuff. Like we want to come on. And it was like, yeah. And the craziest, excuse me, the craziest thing too was that uh, he lived in the same neighborhood as me, Oh, which was the craziest thing ever. So, <laughs> and we didn't know that either until we just like met up to like talk beforehand. And we were just like, uh, yeah, I actually just live right over here. I was like, what the heck? Like, what are you talking about? Like, I live over here. And they're like, what the, like, and so, yeah, it was, it was almost like destined in a way. So it was kind of cool. You ever like have those moments where you sit back and think like, Obviously, in a bit of a loose sense, but you're on the same team as Maru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah, that's a that's a fun thing to 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 think about every now and then. Um, just drop out the like, yeah. I mean, our practice games together. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, there's a reason he's so good at TVP. Let's be real, like you know, uh, <laughs> no. I, I mean, it's cool. I think about it every now and then for sure. But it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it's just like a. Yeah, that's kind of a neat thing. I mean, I don't get to interact too much, obviously. I'm just the social media guy, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so you've done some casting for some other games, Valorant. Um, like, how did that go? Like, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, Valorant's cool. It's an awesome game. It's super hype. Uh, it's just a fun game that really, like, there's so many moments where, where something crazy will happen, and it's just, like, super pop-off worthy kind of thing. And so it's just a fun game to cast for sure. It's totally different from StarCraft 2 as well. Like casting the two games is, is very, they are definitely different skills, which is kind of cool. And it was interesting to kind of test that out. Whereas I'm just, you know, I, I just only cast StarCraft in the, in, the, in the past. And then to try and see what it's like to cast a different game, it was like a totally different experience. It was really cool. Um, it'd be awesome to do more of it, of course, but um, I mean, there's plenty of other super talented Valorant casters out there already, so it's, you know, it's hard to get gigs for that. It's not like I'm, you know, really looking too much for it or anything, but 
Um, yeah, no, it's it's just a fun game. It's like it's really like I said, it's really hype. It's really like action packed. Like something happens and you just like you can't help but just kind of like scream out, just like oh my god, like this is the craziest play ever. Like um, so yeah, it's 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 a fun thing to do compared to StarCraft as well, where a lot of it is kind of like just slow build up and kind of explain uh, explaining certain things where you get. You get the sick pop-off moments too, but it's like comparatively the the amount is is much different. So to have just that constant wave of just like oh my god, this is crazy! Oh my god, this is crazy! And it's just nonstop. It's a it's a fun experience to cast for sure. That's awesome. I'm glad it went really well for you. Thank you. Um, so are, I'm assuming, or rather, I do know that you've been following the development of Stormgate. Uh, what about Zero Space? So you're pretty familiar with that one as well. Yeah, I mean, I looked uh, at their 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 stuff. It looks super interesting. Um, I mean, the fact that they came out with like so much out the gate was crazy to me. Like, it just literally out of nowhere, I was just like, "Oh my god, this is like such a well polished looking product already." Like, it's pretty impressive. Um, obviously, I haven't got my hands on the game at all, so I can't say what I think too much, other than just what I looked at. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it looks impressive. It's cool that there's so many of these new games that are going to be coming out. Um, I'm just excited to kind of try playing it a little bit too. I, I, I don't know, I can't say too much other than that until I actually get my hands on it. I'm, I'm someone that really, I just need to play it. Like I, if before I play it, I can't, I don't really know. Same thing with StarCraft, like a new patch comes out or something. And someone's like, well, what do you think about this patch? Isn't gonna break this thing? And I think this is so bad, Cyclones. I'm like, just play. I didn't play, bro. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think, I can't theory craft these numbers in my head. Like this plus this and this much extra damage equals 60%, you know, OP, like, I don't know, I just, yeah, I just, I need to play it, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to when I can actually play, uh, play Zero Gate, or Zero, Zero Space, Zero yeah. Space, Zero Gate, <laughs> Zero Gate, there's no gates there, yeah. that's the thing, <laughs> Stormgate has so many different gates, the demons come through, and like, Zero Gate's like, we don't have any, <laughs> what's a perk on Zero Walls, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Um, but, uh, but then obviously as far as Stormgate goes, you you know a bit more involved and interested in that um what, what are your like what are you most excited about when, when, when it comes to stormgate or next gen rts's in general um the thing that i'm actually the most uh just excited for is definitely the discovery phase of the game because when i think back of wings of liberty and starcraft in general it's like wings beta was probably the most fun i've had with a game in my life like being able to just go into the game that i think is going to be cool and that i'm interested in and then to just constantly discover what there is to do is so fun like everything feels fresh everything feels new like anything could happen there's so many possibilities um i'm just so looking forward to that phase of stormgate it's just to like everyone's on it everyone's playing everything's developing at warp speed like what's going to happen like what, what strategies are going to come out who's going to be the the top at the top of the ladder at the beginning stuff like that so just being able to discover a new game to me is is so fun and interesting and i'm really excited for that because i'm i'm a player first off like i just like to play the game um so it's like theory crafting and whatever it's like yeah whatever but like I said, before I can play the game, I don't know what's going on. So I just want to play it. I want to see what happens. I just want to know what's going on. Like, there, there, you know, some people are like, oh, like the, the different changes to like the UI or the ma the mechanics to make it, you know, easier for like widespread audience. It's like, yeah, it's cool and all, but it's like, I'm kind of a macro and uh, elitist in a way, like or a mechanics elitist uh, kind of. So it's like that's not that interesting to me. I just want to, I just want to play the game and, and experience it and just see where it goes because that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So safe to say, you'll be participating heavily in whatever is the next significant, you know, development in RTS. Yeah, as long as it feels like StarCraft, I will be playing it. Because that's the, the other interesting thing is that it's like I, I am such a StarCraft person that it seems kind of odd, like almost a no-brainer. That's like, oh, there's a new RTS, you're gonna play it, right? And it's like. No, actually, like <laughs> I am a StarCraft player. I'm not an RTS player. I grew up playing shooters. I was a I was, Call of Duty, super throwback niche game that some people may know. America's Army, America's Army Two was actually 
low, not maybe not low key, but at, to eight year old me, it was low key, a uh, army recruitment device. <laughs> but <laughs> as an esport and like a competitive game, it was actually so good. It was like well, f like fleshed out. It was like super realistic. It was actually so fun. Uh, but no, I, I, I played a lot of shooters as a kid. So, uh, I mean, I played, you know, Brood War and Warcraft 3 as like custom games and, and you know, against AI and stuff like that. But um, that's still Blizzard RTS. So I was not a Command and Conquer guy. I was not a Red Alert guy. Like all these other old uh, RTSs that everyone kind of goes crazy for, crazy for. Age of Empires, zero. I don't like Age of Empires 4. I think it was awful, not gonna lie. I, I don't like it. Uh, so it doesn't feel, if it doesn't feel like StarCraft, I'm not gonna play it. But assuming that it does, I will be hand, just, you know, diving straight in. And I mean, the people behind Stormgate and Frost Giant, you know, I, I'm pretty confident to say that they'll probably get something to itch that, uh, to scratch that itch for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's about all I had prepared for you. Do you have any, uh, any closing words, man? Um, I just, I don't know, thank you for having me to, to do the interview. It's actually, honestly, just a, a great thing to be able to just talk about whatever I like about StarCraft. It's just kind of fun uh, to, to get the word out of, you know, just the kind of lesser known people. I'm not, you know, the, the hugest guy in the scene or anything, but uh, it's just, you know, it's fun to talk about StarCraft. I just enjoy it. And um, yeah, I don't know, just big thanks. StarCraft's a huge thing in my life, so to, to get this out here is, is just this is cool. So, um, yeah, I don't know, just, I don't know, thanks to Onside. Is that what we do? Shout outs? Yeah, yeah. Like, thanks? Like, Onside, you're sick. Like, I don't know, like, thanks for giving me a job. Like, I don't know, like, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Shout out to the All Things Protoss guys, I guess. They're all sick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Starcraft's sick. I just love Starcraft, man. Hopefully, hopefully we get more years in the future. That's all I can say. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I think like uh, there's some other like not like incredibly famous people that I've either done videos with or are planning to, and and some people are like a little apprehensive. Like, are you sure you want to talk to me? Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, y y you you I mean, just because you're not like the most famous person doesn't mean that you're not an integral part of the scene. And, and if all those like other people didn't exist or even just fans but obviously interviewing fans is a little weird because like <laughs> not a lot of participation there but but you understand what i'm saying like you, you you're obviously a lot more than just a fan um, yeah i appreciate that i mean i appreciate you just giving me the again like the chance to you know talk about whatever it is i want to talk about with this glorious game that we have here <laughs> and i appreciate you coming on man um so yeah i think that about does it awesome thanks so much Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Get subscribed so you don't miss out on future releases like this one. If you really enjoy what I do here, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. That's all for now, my friends. Until next time.